morning. How are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome to our fourth lesson about scientists and inventors. Thank you everybody who joined me last week for our little workshops. Um, I've had some really great feedback to take on board regarding those. Um, and those of you that didn't join us because that wasn't your cup of tea, then welcome to week four. And today we are going to look at one of my favourite scientists. It was a scientist I came across when my eldest was five because of a particular interest of his. Um, and it's something that I'm really excited to share with you. And hopefully it is a scientist that you don't know much about, but you might do. We'll have to see. So hello to everybody. Jack, Grace, Rose, Jaden, Edward, Jay, Aurora, Janice, um, and everybody who is watching over on YouTube, everybody who's watching on Catch Up. Um, and let's get started. This is a picture um, of the lady we are going to look at. This is when she was a bit older. This is another picture or a drawing of her, should we say, a drawing of her uh, when she was a bit younger. And the lady we're going to look at today is Mary Leakey. Um, and we're going to look at her significant theories we're going to look at the life of, and work of Mary Leakey and we're going to decide, like we've done with the other scientists, how significant we think she was. And so we're going to start straight away because Mary Leakey was interested in evolution. And so that was what her life's work was based around with her husband. Um, and so what I'd like you to think about is what do you already know? about evolution. What is evolution? Now, anything about evolution, but Mary Leakey, because there's lots of things you could talk about with evolution, but Mary Leakey, her interest was about the evolution of humans. So she was interested in how Homo sapiens became Homo sapiens. But anything you know about evolution, what do you know? So you could have a little think about it. If you're doing a, some, you know, work in a book, you could jot anything down. You could add it to the chat. But what do we already maybe know about evolution? So we've got some answers coming in already about how we came into being. What's the kind of root word of evolution? It's evolve. So what does evolution really mean? What do you already know? So you may know about another scientist, and another scientist, uh, another scientist is Charles Darwin. So he was the person that came up with the theory of evolution. There's lots of people joining us. Welcome to everyone joining us. We're just looking at what we already know about evolution. Yeah, so someone said someone has a baby, the baby isn't quite the same as their parents. That's correct, but how do we get to the process of evolution? What does so? If, I'll give you an example of evolution. They reckon scientists, it's a theory, that in a few hundred years' time, when they look at skeletons, uh, people will have much stronger thumbs than they may be used to because now we spend a lot of time on our telephones. We tend to mobile telephones. We tend to message using our thumbs, and so they reckon that maybe we may evolve to have stronger thumbs. Um, it's a theory. We may not because we don't know what technology is coming, but that's a theory of evolution. So let's get going. Let's think about it. So the evolution, Mary Leakey was interested in the evolution of humans. And so this came about because scientists started to analyse fossils and they started to work out a theory uh, that humans had evolved. And they were looking at fossils of our early our ancestors. And when we look at our early ancestors, we don't use the word human because they weren't exactly what we look like today. We use the word hominin. So we try to work out how did we get to modern day humans? So we are known as Homo sapiens. So if you want the technical term for what we look like right now, we would refer to ourselves as Homo sapiens. And the, the people that came before us, or the animals that came before us, are known as hominins. Um, and so evolution is a scientific theory 
And the scientific theory is that we have slightly changed over time. Little changes that occur in any species, so not just humans, the things that are little changes, little changes, little changes, little changes, which then are passed from one generation to another, and that's how we evolve. So if you think about evolution from the beginning, uh, evolution is a massive process of how we've got to where we have. But what Mary Leakey was interested in was the evolution of humans. So you have these kind of almost pre-human species, these hominins, and then how those little changes, little changes, little changes have occurred to what we get today, which is known as Homo sapiens. Now, a really big, big thing to say, and I hear this from young people all the time, is uh, we um, have descended from apes, or we've descended uh, from chimpanzees, or we've descended from monkeys. And I see that a lot, and it's actually not quite true. So scientists have analysed our DNA, they've analysed the, what makes us who we are, and they've also uh, analysed the um, DNA of lots of different apes, things like ch chimpanzees. And the DNA proves that we are related, so we're related, we're sort of the part of the extended scientific family, but we're not evolved from them. So I hear this all the time, we're evolved from apes, we're evolved from monkeys. No, we aren't. We have a common ancestor. So somewhere, scientists believe, if you go back millions of years, we have a common ancestor, but we evolved separately. We evolved differently. So we have a shared ancestor, but we are not evolved from each other. Does that make sense? So never again say we're evolved from apes, we're evolved from monkeys, we're evolved from chimpanzees, because we're not. We believe to have a common ancestor, but we are not evolved from apes. They are a separate, uh, they are a separate species again. Okay, so that's a really important one. So there we are a completely separate species. So forget that if you ever say it, don't ever say it. We potentially have common ancestors, but when you look at the DNA, we have come from somewhere else. We have come from the same overarching family, but we have developed from a different species line than monkeys, apes, chimpanzees. And this is the line uh, that we have evolved from. So these are hominins. So number six, as you can see, is humans. You can see the man sat on a chair in a suit. That's what we kind of look like today. Also known as Homo sapiens. So number six is a Homo sapien. But I'm going to just turn my camera so you can see these, these in a bit more detail. Can you see at the bottom, there are various hominins. And this is where we believe to have evolved from. So the first one is a Sahelanthropus Tacadensis. And you see that? So that's one hominin. Then we have a, a Homo habilis. And you see that hominin. Then we have an Ardipithecus ramidus. And you see that hominin. Then we have Homo erectus. And then we have the Australopithecus. Now, those are, if you think about how we have evolved to Homo sapiens, they are the chain to how we have evolved from Homo sapiens. So who do you think came first? So we've evolved into Homo sapiens, we have not evolved from, uh, we've evolved to Homo sapiens, we've not evolved from chimpanzees or apes, we have evolved from these hominins. So who do you think in that list came first? Who do you think came second? Who do you think came third, fourth? And who do you think came fifth just before we evolved into Homo sapiens? So have a little go at home. What do you think came first? So have a look. If not, work back 
backwards. So look at the one that looks the most human and work backwards. If you find it tricky. Got a one, three, five, four, two, and six. We number them all at the bottom. Good, good idea, Jack. We go through them. Make sure we're having a go and not just filling the chat with smileys, please. Let's have a go. So this is how they think humans have evolved. So the first kind of human-like creature is number one. So it's a Sacalanthropus tacadensis or densis. So that is, if you go back millions of years, that's sort of the start of the chain. And then over millions of years, the, that species evolved into an Ardipithecus ramidus. Okay, so can you see the evolution? And then over millions of years, that then evolved into Australopithecus. So Australopithecus stands on two legs. So you can see that there is an evolution into Australopithecus. Then millions of years go through, go past, and Australopithecus evolves into Homo habilis. Now, can you see that it looks still a little bit... Um, similar to Australopithecus, but we're starting to look more human-like, I think, when you get to Homo habilis. Then millions of years go past and you get Homo erectus, which again looks even more like uh, what we look like today. And then we get more millions of years and then we get to Homo sapiens. And this is what scientists believe is how we have evolved. So we have evolved from Homo erectus, who evolved from Homo habilis, who evolved from Australopithecus, and so on. But one thing we did not evolve from is we did not evolve from monkeys or chimpanzees. Lots of young people think that one day a monkey got up one day and just walked on two feet, and that's how we've evolved. We've, we have the same ancestors, but we have evolved from different lines. And so this is the current thought of how we've evolved. Now we have evidence for this. This is not just made up. Scientists haven't just drawn these pictures and said, made up these names and gone, yep, yeah, that's what we reckon. It's come from evidence and evidence from a lot of scientists, but evidence particularly from Mary Leakey. Now, Mary Leakey was a paleoanthropologist. So it's like uh, an anthropologist, a paleoanthropologist. So she's looking at kind of society um, from uh, the prehistoric times. So she's basically someone who was interested in early hominins. That's what a paleoanthropologist is. Now she worked with her husband, Louis, um, and she worked for most of her career in Tanzania. And the reason is, is because scientists believe that these evolutionary processes happened in Africa. Most of our archaeological evidence, not all of it, but a lot of it, has come, of hominins, has come from Africa. Now, she was born in 1913, so just to give you a bit of uh, chronological awareness, just before World War I. As a child, she lived in France. And she would go on, uh, on visits as a child to local archaeological excavations. And that's what started her interest. So she started as, you know, a bit like us when we go somewhere on a trip one day. That's what she used to like to do as a child. She used to go to archaeological excavations. And also she visited a really famous cave where there were prehistoric paintings, a bit like the picture you can see on the slide. And so like lots of us get interested, I remember uh, that I became interested in history when I was around about eight. Um, and that's because we did a really exciting project 
Um, and so um, and so that's where these interests start. And it was exactly the same for Mary Leakey. So World War I was um, 1914 to 1918. So she was born just before that. Now, in 1926, uh, she returned from France to live in London because her dad sadly died um, and she was sent to an English school. But she was rather, and this is one of the other reasons I quite I find her quite an interesting character, she wasn't a conformist. She didn't like conforming to English school rules. Uh, she was expelled from two different schools because she didn't settle, she didn't uh, follow the expectations of the school and eventually uh, she uh, was her parent her mum sort of said well you've tried two schools it's not really working for you and so she had a tutor at home so when because life was a bit different and I suppose home education was a bit different back then she was then refused a place at university because university said look you were excluded from two schools. You don't have, uh, you know, the correct things that you should. And so therefore you can't come to university, which I think is, that would not happen today. Um, but um, it was the sign of that, that particular time. So she wasn't allowed to go to university, even though she was really interested and wanted to study archeology. span The university wouldn't let her in. So instead what she did was she decided that she was going to uh, join in and uh, become an archaeological excavator. And so at 17, that's what she did. She got a job as an illustrator because she was a really good drawer. And she started to draw anything that was, she worked on a Stone Age dig in Hembury in England. And so anything that they discovered, she started to draw them and document them because she's living, you're living at a time when photography isn't particularly straightforward and easy like it is today. So it's often easy to draw the finds. And so she became, she was really good at it. She was a really good drawer. And because she was so good at documenting things on archeological digs, other archeologists want her to work for them. So by the 1930s, she's worked, she's worked on quite a lot of archeological digs because lots of people want her to be their documenter of these archeological digs. And in, 19, in the 1930s, Louis Leakey employs her to illustrate his book about human evolution. And so uh, they work together on this book about human evolution and it's a love story, they fall in love and they get married and they form what is now known really as one of science science's most famous teams because what they do is they move to Africa and they move to Tanzania and they start to excavate particular areas and they start to make some incredible discoveries and what makes Mary Leakey so significant is the improvements that she did for developing the theories of human evolution and the first thing was she found a fossilized skull and she found a fossilized skull from Proconsul Africanus, which is believed to be an ancestor of humans and apes. And it was believed to be 18 million years old. So, you know, we're talking about that we potentially had this ancestor that we both sort of humans and apes developed from. Well, this is one of the theories that came from Mary Leakey. Then in 1959, she discovered a whole new species of hominin that nobody um, had known before. Now, it became known as the Australopithecus bowsi. So there are other names, um, but that is, if you look in a, in a book today, that is most likely what it's known as, an Australopithecus bowsi. And this was about two million years old. And so she had excavated these two skulls that had proof that we had evolved um, and that humans and homo sapiens had evolved through these hominins. And then in 1960, uh, she was doing another excavation and she found lots and lots of stone tools um, and fossils of homo habilis, which is another one of these hominins. 
that we have evolved from. So she she kind of excavated so her whole life uh, all of these early humans. Now her husband died in 1972, but she carried on in 1979. She discovered a trail of early hominin footprints. Now this, if you look at any book on evolution, these uh, fossilized footprints are incredibly famous and you will not find any lesson taught about human evolution that doesn't refer to these footprints. Um, and so that is again what makes her so significant because it proved that at some point in history we got up and walked on two feet and those uh, early hominin footprints proved that we were worth walking on two feet because you can tell when you're looking at footprints uh, you know how an animal is moving she died in 1996 in kenya and her children and her grandchildren now carry on this work because it's not a complete picture we don't it's, it's a constantly evolving theory human uh, evolution so that's the story of mary leakey um so let's just recap before we move on to start thinking about looking at her finds in a bit more detail and why she was so significant let's have a little recap of her life so let's go for true or false so do we think this is true or do we think this is false mary's first job was as an illustrator at a stone age dig when she was 17. was that true or was that false Lots of people saying what fantastic discovery she's made. Absolutely, yeah. I couldn't even imagine what it would be like to excavate some of the things that she did. I always wanted to be an archaeologist. I never ever did. My life took me on a different path. Um, but I always, that was my dream when I was a child, was to be an archaeologist. Right, we're all going for true. It is, it was true. Remember, she wasn't accepted to university. Uh, because universities thought that she would be too problematic because she'd been excluded from lots of schools. Louis Leakey found many fossils, but Mary only illustrated them. Is that true or is that false? What do we think? Louis Leakey found the fossils, Mary only illustrated them. Is that true or is that false? Well done, it is false. She found lots of significant finds and she continued way after her husband had died. Mary didn't settle into school, but she did very well at university. Is that true or is that one false? did we remember from our story and the best teacher ever well thank you very much to whoever uh, wrote that comment that's uh, made my day i'm not sure i am though but that's a very nice thing to say yes it's false she wasn't allowed to un into university and again i think this is another scientist that's proven uh, that sometimes lots of things in life don't go your way. We often have lots of difficulties for various reasons, but if you keep being resilient and determined, you can overcome all of those. Yeah, Rebecca, I know it's you, but I don't know who's behind the comment because I assume that's your grown up. One of Mary Leakey's discovery was a set of footprints from an early species of human. So was that one of her discoveries? Did she find a set of footprints? What do you think? Is that true or is that false? Lots of people going for true. Oh, I press the wrong button. It is true. I'm going to show you the photograph of it in a minute. Mary Leakey was a better paleoanthropologist than her husband. Mary Leakey was a better paleoanthropologist than her husband. Is that true or is that false? What do we think? Oh, some people are saying true. Some people are saying false. I've been a bit mean. I've kind of this one purple. Can you remember what it's called? That really posh word for your opinion. 
Can you remember? This is neither true nor false because they did do it together. And this is interpretation. So you could interpret, uh, your interpretation might be that she is better because she found those footprints. Some people might have the interpretation that they were both, uh, they were both um, equally important. Absolutely, it's subjective because it is your interpretation. Now, here's a picture on the left of those fossilized footprints. And on the right, this is the gorge where Leakey excavated many tools that had been used by hominins. And so Leakey's achievement in the footprints and in the finding of the tools helped to prove uh, um, the theory of human evolution. It, it added bits to the puzzle. Now, like I said with the other scientists, it wasn't only Leakey. You can't say that it's just her views and, and her evidence. There were lots and lots of scientists that have worked on these theories, but these fossilised footprints and these excavated tools used by Homo habilis are really, really significant. Now, why? What did they prove? Why do you think these things were significant? Were significant? What do you think they prove? What do tools prove? So what? She found a few tools. What do they prove? So she found a few footprints, and I can find loads of footprints from various fossilized footprints from loads of animals. What does that prove? Why? Why are we finding her her things significant? Why should we care? What does a pile of fossilised footprints prove? What does finding tools from hominins prove? I'm going to give you time to think about that because that's a hard question. What They do prove theories, but, but what do they prove? What theories do they prove? So what? let's start with the footprints. Oh, we're getting there now a little bit. I can see some. If you look at the footprints and then you think about the tools, how do they prove that we're pre-human? How do they prove, what do they prove? But some people are saying that the, as Jack saying that the footprints prove that we weren't crawling, that we have evolved from standing. And um, the, the, the tools prove that we are intelligent. So absolutely, that is what scientists often think about when they're looking at various animals. There's lots of animals that use tools. Um, lots of apes use tools to, um, to, for example, catch ants. They put sticks in ant holes. Um, but yeah, it starts to think, show that we've evolved different processes of making weapons, preparing food. So it does absolutely show uh, that we are developing um, our brains as well as physically developing. So these are the footprints. They're really interesting, aren't they? They look really different. They don't look exactly like human footprints, do they? Um, there's some little bits. I mean, the one on the right, on the left-hand side photo, looks a little bit like a claw, but it's just where it's sort of where, because it was in mud, so it's just where you sort of they've sloped a little bit. But these do look, you can see, like little footprints. And you can see as the people have walked, <coughs> so it looks like two different people have walked together alongside each other, because you can see the left, right, left, right, left. And it isn't two toes. It does look a bit like two toes, but I, it's just potentially where we've, um, where it's sort of smudged in the, in the, mud um scientists think that it would still look like feet but basically it does prove as we've said that changes did occur over time that humans have evolved so the footprints were tracked through a layer of volcanic ash and they believe that there was at least two potentially three of the same species now, we don't know which species they were, but the theory is uh, that it was the Australopithecus. But this is the most significant, uh, one of the most significant finds of human evolution, because it proved 
um, that eventually we have moved from walking on four legs to walking or four limbs to walking on two. So it proved that at some point early hominins started to walk upright. Uh, it's known as bipedalism, if you want the posh word, but it basically means that you walk on two uh, legs. Now the footprints were excavated in Tanzania. Uh, there's been lots of information, like lots of discussion about what dates they come from, but current uh, scientific thought is that they are dated to about 3.7 million years ago. So we have lots and lots of different um, skulls um, and these footprints that help us piece together when your people are asking, well, how did we know these various things? You can piece together how these hominins have evolved. This is the gorge where the tools were found. Um, so there's lots of excavation. Excavation means where you take the various layers off. So as, um, as we have, as the earth has changed, um, and society has changed, um, le there's diff the levels are different. So, for example, if you think about um, York, if the, the level that you walk on, and we've looked at York before, and the level that maybe the Romans were walking on is very, very different. So if you've been to the Roman baths in Bath, for example, if you go down the steps, um, it's not street level, and you can actually look down the level layers so the, the 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 soil the ground if you will that these hominins would be walking on is significantly lower than the ground that we're currently walking on if that makes sense and so not to get overly complicated as to why but in order to find it you need to excavate and excavate means to basically carefully dig now you can use lots and lots of tools in order to work out where to dig they often archaeologists often dig test pits you can have things like geophys, which is where you like scan the earth and see if you can see evidence of things. It will actually scan the layers of the earth. Um, but it's basically moving the layers that we're walking on to find the layers uh, that these hominins are walking on. And actually, if you go through and you look at all the different layers, you can actually chart the different periods of time and some museums actually have like an have the different layers um, so if you're looking at somewhere where uh, you know Colchester for example they have a Boudicca layer which sh shows all the burning that Boudicca potentially or her tribe did during the Roman era you can actually dig down and you can chart all of the different eras of time that's totally not relevant. That's a bit off cast, but hopefully that's helped with what excavation means. But let's get back to these stone tools. So they found things like hand axes, so actual axes that they had made, tools that they had made. And so this proved that actually there is some level of clear intelligence. They show an evolutionary change. We're not just uh, we, we've moved from potentially being these kind of animals to then developing this level of consciousness. This development of social interaction, of communal activity, of increased thinking to create tools. Now, we're not the only animals that create tools. Lots of animals do that. But these tools that they found shows that we have started to change. We're starting to change into something that's more recognizably human. And so that's why her tools were so, her tool finds were so significant. They were also found in an area along with sort of fossilized animal remains. So it shows the theory behind that we were using these tools to catch prey, to work communally, to interact together, it suggests that we had we were potentially developing some sort of language um, and so the tools again are really important proof that we were evolving so let's just finish off and think which of her finds do you think was most important do you think the footprints were the most important um, it's the late tolly footprints if you're interested in finding more about them or do you think the older vague gorge tools, if you want to find out more about the tools, 
uh, you can do a search of those. Do you think the tools were more important? More important? And I'm looking for a reason why. So have a little think. So I think the footprints because, or I think the tools because, and why. And then what I'm going to leave you is is to think about how significant to science do you think Mary Leakey was? There's that skill of interpretation again. Do you think she's really significant? Do you think she's not particularly significant? Maybe, if you wanted to, you could go and research some more about human evolution. You could find out some more about other scientists that have added to these theories to help you work out how significant Mary Leakey was. So some people, lots of people are saying footprints. They will show that we were walking uh, on two feet. Uh, some people are saying it's tools. Uh, because um, it uh, shows that we're developing uh, digging and other processes. Some are not even agreeing at all and saying it was the skulls, because it's definitely, again, more solid evidence. Absolutely. But go and have a look. Find out some more information. It's a really, really interesting topic. As I said, my son got really, really interested in human evolution, particularly the Australopithecus. Um, when... Um, when we uh, when he was about five so i've done lots and lots lots of people saying tools to use because they show intelligence and evolution absolutely lots of these things are incredibly significant um so uh, yeah maybe share some more information like go and find some more information and develop that opinion further but i will see you next week for another scientist or inventor hopefully somebody that you haven't heard of before there will be a, a bit of an experiment that you can or you may wish to do or may not wish to do but do get your grown-ups when that live lesson goes out do get your grown-ups to have a little look what you need but you're going to need to gather some materials so lift maybe some bits of different bits of plastic uh, maybe some tile little bits of tiles maybe if you've got if you're doing bits of wood um some cloth, different bits of cloth, but what you're going to do is you're going to bring next week some different materials, so lots of different materials, that you don't need to go and buy anything, but just anything that you can find, wood, tiles, plastics, cardboard, um, cloth, you know, anything that uh, anything you can got, so I can see uh, on my side I've got an old uh, sweetie, plastic sweetie lid um, from Christmas, so anything that you can gather, but something that you don't mind not breaking but something that you don't mind something not nice happening to so we're going to do a test so don't bring something lovely that you, you're going to be protective over because we're going to wreck it sounds a bit extreme but we're not gonna we're going to test it so it might not look all, all nice at the end so don't bring like a nice plastic jewelry box because we're, we're not going to wreck it but i can't think of anything nice to say but that's next week obviously you don't have to do that. You can just watch me. You don't have to bring anything. I'm really, I find that really important. You don't have to do anything. But if you find out anything more exciting about Mary Leakey, do go share it over in our Facebook group because I love to see it. And I will see you next week for another scientist. I'll see you soon.